Hi everyone. Let's resume with the next page here, number three and number three. Um, use the graph of y equals two to the x as a, the parent function. Write the equation for the graph below. I, I kind of want to just see where y equals two to the x is when um, when x is zero. Um, 2 to the 0 is 1. When x is 1, 2 to the 1st is 2. When x is 2, 2 to the 2nd is 4. When x is 3, 3 to the 2nd is 9. So, um, I got this. And negative 1 is going to be a half and then a fourth. So, it kind of follows along here. And then 1... 1, 2, and then 2, 4, goes up pretty quickly after that, and then 3, 9 is right here. So this is the graph of y equals 2 to the x. Now this is the parent function. It appears to me that the thing's been flipped. So I'm going to kind of flip it just to look where the flip of it would be. The reflection is a more technical term. And then 9 down here, 9 down here. So the flip version of this goes, did I go through there? Whoops. Okay, I'm missing that point right there. So let me, let me start again here with this. All right. Go down here like this. And then when I look at this one, it looks like the reflection has been raised one, two, three points. Let me check another place. One, two, three points. This does look like one, two, three. So when I graph that reflection, the reflection is going to just require the negative out here. And then when I drop or raise that three units up, I'll put a plus three right there. So what did I do? I drew the parent graph, then I reflected it, and then see, just observed how much movement from the reflection happened to there. All right, number three, use a table of values to carefully graph y equals one-half to the x minus two. F, X and F of X. Um, I'll start at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. All right, negative 3 minus 2, that's negative 5. That's 1 half to the negative fifth is the same as, if I take the reciprocal of that, is 2 to the 5th. So this is way up here at 32. That's not going to show up. 1 half to the negative 4th is 16. I'm just going to take a half each time. 1 half of negative 3, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, is 8. 1 half, of neg 1 half to the negative 2nd is 4. 1 half to the negative 1st is 2. 1 half to the... 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 half to the 0 is 1, everything. Okay, let me put a few more here. 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 half to the 1st is a half. 4 minus 2 is 2. Half, that's a fourth. All right, I got enough here. This one's not showing up. Negative 1, 8 is showing up. 0, 4 is showing up. 1, 2 is showing up. 2, 1 is showing up, 3 and 1 half, 4 and a fourth, and so on. So we're starting up here, we're working our way down, curving down here, and getting real close. The x-axis is an asymptote. All right. Let's see.
I'm going to go ahead and maybe just try to finish this up on this last video here. $1,000 is invested into an account for 10 years at a rate of 4.75%. Find the total amount in the account if the interest is compounded semi-annually. All right, so you got to remember this formula. So the amount here, the principal is $1,000. One plus 4.75% use 0 0.0475. Semi-annually means two times a year. So put two there. And let's go two times 10 up here. All right. So I'm going to take 1,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0475 divided by 2 and then I'm going to raise that to the 20th power and I'm looking at the account has got $1,599.11 in it after 10 years, if we compound continuously, we use APERT and P is 1000 times E to the R, which is 0 0.0475 times T, which is 10. And then we go 1,000 times. Now, second LN will get us that E to the power. And that's 0 0.0475 times 10 is what I'm going to put there for the power. And that gives me about $8 more. $1,608.01. $1,608.01. All right, number five, two to the ninth power in logarithmic form. That would be the log. This is the base, two, of the answer, 512, is the exponent, nine. Log base two of 512 is nine. Log base three of 81 is four. Three is the base. 4, the answer is the exponent, and the, an the answer of the logarithm is the exponent, and then the answer of an exponential is this number right here. All right, number 7, log of 157. Log is right there, 157. Oops. three decimal places. 2.196. So 10 to the power of 2.196 is going to be real close to 157. Number eight, natural log of 25 in terms of natural log of four and natural log of five. So I think the one thing we need to do is change 25 to five to the second power. So natural log of five squared over, oops, okay, natural log of 5 squared over 4, let's use the division property, says I can separate this into the natu natural log of 5 squared minus the natural log of 4, and then you have this power property, because we want it in terms of just natural log of 5, so that's 2 natural log of 5, minus natural log of 4. All right, number 9, to expand this one. This is this times this times this. We multiply. Log base 4 of 5 plus log base 4 of x cubed plus log base 4 of y. That is the product property. And that's the log base 4 of 5 plus 
plus 3 times log base 4 of x, the pro power property there, plus the log base 4 of y. And I think I'll just stop there for the answer. And division means subtract. So let's take the natural log of the square root of 3x minus 5 minus the natural log of 7. And I'm going to write this as the natural log of 3x minus 5 to the 1 half power minus the natural log of 7. And I'll bring that half power, square root is a half power, 1 half natural log of 3x minus 5 minus the natural log of 7. That is expanded. This one, remember to condense. I have a feeling your test will have the same mistake on it. We'll find out. Condense. want to make it smaller. I'm going to write this as the natural log of x plus 2 squared. Pull this and make it there. Minus the natural log of x. Minus, we'll switch to division with just one natural log. x minus 2 squared over x. These are probably not necessary, this set of parentheses, but I think you get the point. And this one, let's deal with the inner parentheses. I'm going to take log base 2 of x over x minus 4. And then I'm going to make this one-third of exponent of this. So I'm going to make it log base 2. I'll use parentheses around it now. x over x minus 4 to the one-third power. And to make it pretty, let's go log base 2. Instead of one-third power, let's draw a nice bracket there. A cube root of x over x minus 4. That's the answer I like the best right there. Number 11, evaluate the log base 3 of, nope, log base 5 of 57 using either common logs, log base 10, or natural logs, log base E. Um, let's do log base 5 of 57 is the log of 57 over the log of 5. This doesn't have a change of base, so I'm going to use it. Log 57 divided by log of 5 equals 2.512. Now, what if I'd have chosen natural log? Natural log of 57 divided by natural log of 5 gives me 2.512, just the same. All right, good luck on that test tomorrow. I'm pulling for you.